In 2010, the once purple state of Wisconsin went red, very, very red. In that Republican wave year, Republicans in Wisconsin gained a majority in both the state assembly and the state senate. It was the first time a political party had won both houses of that legislature on a single voting day in more than 70 years. But it wasn't just the legislature. Republicans also got the governor's mansion that year as well, with voters electing Republican Scott Walker. 2010 was just a huge, huge year for Republicans everywhere, but particularly in Wisconsin. And once they were all sworn into office in Wisconsin, Wisconsin Republicans moved almost immediately to start taking apart union rights in that state. You might remember it was immediately a hugely contentious issue. It sparked some of the largest protests that have ever happened in the state of Wisconsin. People said that it rended the civic fabric of that state in a way they had never seen before. It led to division and rancor and unprecedented political combat like Wisconsin had never seen before in modern times. It led even to the attempted recall of Governor Walker. It just absolutely transformed that state. Why was it so important to them to do that? Why did Wisconsin Republicans go so far out of their way and cause that much drama in the state to do it? At the most basic level, I mean, one way to understand the difference between the two parties in this country is that Republicans represent people who sign paychecks on the front and Democrats represent people who sign paychecks on the back the ones who cash them, right? So the Republican Party is the party of business owners. Businesses are anti-union because they want to be able to have maximum leverage over their employees and pay them as little as the market allows. So maybe Republicans lining up against the unions is just ideologically motivated. Democrats stand for the workers. Republicans stand for the business owners. Maybe that's all it is. But there's also this. Uh, in the 2010 election cycle, these were the heavyweight outside spenders across the country. These are the 10 outside groups that spent the most money in that election cycle. Most of the top 10 donated big time to the Republican side. The Karl Rove American Crossroads Group, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the American Action Network, just loads of outside money, much of it corporate funded, that mostly favored Republican candidates for office. Six of the top 10 outside spending groups that year spent in favor of Republicans. The only major spenders on behalf of Democrats that year had one thing in common. They were all unions. That was it. And they only made up three of the top 10 outside spending groups. So strategically speaking, if you were somehow able to get rid of the unions, if you were able to take them out of the game by making union membership almost impossible, you would essentially cripple the Democratic Party's ability to compete in the high stakes fundraising part of the electoral process. So busting unions, yeah, it's ideological. Yeah, it's ideological. But it also has a very, very crude partisan interest that in reality was crucial to understanding what happened in 2010 in the state of Wisconsin. It was about Republicans keeping control of that state for the long run, if they could. And what we are seeing right now in the great state of Tennessee is like the child's treasury cardboard picture book of how to see this dynamic at work in the starkest possible terms. Because in Chattanooga, Tennessee, right now, there's a union drive underway at an auto plant, at a Volkswagen plant. And practically every elected Republican in the state of Tennessee is doing backflips right now to try to stop that plant from unionizing, to convince people who work at that plant to not vote for the union. But the Republicans are not making that case on behalf of the factory owner, on behalf of Volkswagen. Because Volkswagen kind of wants the union. They're in favor of it, basically. Yesterday, on the first day of that Volkswagen plant's three-day election on whether to unionize, Republican U.S. Senator Bob Corker had a message for the workers there. He basically said, hey, if you guys don't go for the union, I've been told there will be another car for you to build here at this plant. Meaning if you do vote for the union, this plant might not get any more work from Volkswagen. Senator Corker said that, and then the company, Volkswagen, had to come out afterwards and say, hey, actually, that's not true at all. And we're in a position to know because we're the company. He has no idea what he's talking about. Bob Corker, though, stands by it. Whatever you guys say, don't unionize. This is sort of the full flowering of this issue on the right. Volkswagen wants the union. It's Republicans who don't. Elected Republicans are against union rights. They're against workers organizing to better their lives, even when being against those things puts them against the actual businesses they claim to be defending, right? What they're really against is the prospect that there might be more union members in Tennessee who might pay union dues, and those unions might then support Democratic candidates. This is partisan. Yes, it is business, but it is business as usual, which in Tennessee and around the country means that it is partisan politics. That Volkswagen union election should wrap up tomorrow. We should get the results soon thereafter. Nobody knows how it's going to go. But the Republican apoplexy on this is 100% understandable in partisan terms. 
Now it's time for the last word with Lawrence O'Donnell. Have a great night.